evening. Welcome to the Active Teaching Lab. Um, my name is John Martin, and I am assisted today with Karen Spader and Margaret Murphy as my moderators. They will be adding, and Lane. Hello, Lane. Welcome. Add a profile picture, Lane. Um, they will be helping us um, answer questions in the chat on your side, on the side of your, your window, uh, window here, and also um, helping to helping me or organize and stay up to date and remember to do things and uh, press record and not record, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, hey, Karen, to your question, Lane is accessing our session through his mobile device. In Blackboard Collaborator, is it the, uh, is it your mobile right. browser, Lane, or is it your, uh, is, is it a Canvas app? It's in Safari, okay. It's in Safari, right? Yeah, All I'm right. curious well, about I, through the app. I hope it's a great and experience for Elaine. It doesn't seem to be working for me either. Steve made a comment about it. Okay. Oh, and I missed that. There it is. Okay. All right. So back to the back to the lab. In the uh, the activity sheet, we have uh, a table there for you to add some questions, and we'll we'll if you want, and if you see. If you know any answers or have any thoughts about any of the questions or t uh, topics on the left side, please feel free to answer them and to share your thoughts and opinions and experiences on the right side because uh, your opinions are important. Your experiences are important. I often say in labs, I've never taught a wet lab course. I've never taught a 100-person lecture. I've never taught, there are lots of mediums and students and disciplines that I have not taught in. So I don't know the answer, um, but other people, other people might. And so uh, having their experience uh, is, is great. Okay, so as we say, today's topic is, or today's theme, I call them themes, is projects for remote learning. Now the idea, how many of you show of hands, and by to do that, in the center of your image um, on the bottom, there should be a little raise high end icon of a, a, a little person doing this. Click on that if you use projects in your face-to-face -face course. And I'm gonna do a quick count of people. It looks like lots of people are doing that. Great. Um, anybody wanna put into the chat why? you choose projects? Um, what is it about projects that work well? And um, what is it about projects that don't work well? Um, any of your challenges there? With that as a baseline, we can start thinking about how do we start to um, move that, move those to this remote teaching in, in an online space? Are there ways to do that? Mm -hmm. Can we do that? And all right, I see real world application, real world experiences. Um, everybody contributes towards something. That's, you know, contributions is good. And it gives them a chance to um, share their expertise as well, right? When they're group projects, there's some individual work that they do. They learn to negotiate with each other collectively um, for a project and a group project. Uh, teamwork is critical skill. Yep. Um, Students teaching each other help solidify knowledge. Absolutely, both for the student who's rethinking what they learned and rephrasing it in a way that says, well, what does my colleague, my peer, my student friend here, um, how can I say things in a way that, that works for them, right? They have to learn how to talk about the topic with each other to do that as well. Um, Things that don't work well, we've got, I lost it. Students have different abilities to meet deadlines, yes. All right, I don't know the full age of my crowd here, but I'm guessing that some of you, when you're in college undergraduate and you had a group project, how much of a pain was it to organize when your only phone was in the residence hall and you had to actually meet in person to talk about things. Uh, there were no Google collaborative documents to sort of work on collaboratively. Um, it was much harder in the past, I think, to do this collaborative work than it is today. I say in a different physical space from you, 
looking at some of your videos, watching the chats come in, um, able to share a link and seeing a collaborative document that's on, on the screen in front of me. Like, in some ways, kids these days, you got group projects easy. Back when I was a kid, da 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 da, -da right? So the barriers for doing these group projects has gone way down, yeah, yeah. although they still exist. And I want to invite people, if you have any thoughts or uh, ideas in the chat, or raise your hand if you really want to make that point across, because sometimes I lose stuff in the chat. Um, and I'll call on you, and you can jump in and add your insights and, and thoughts on that. Um, Angela writes in the chat, students forget the importance of communication. They, they forget it. And yet they do it all the time, right? And that's a thing that we we recognize. It's it's uh, we often want things to be handed to us in exactly the right format for us to um, understand it and take it in and work well with it. And we forget what we forget. I think is how important it is to communicate with each other. What are our needs, and how can we? What is our responsibility in making that happen? In some ways, projects puts a lot of that structure that you as an instructor might have to do onto the students. It shows that you trust them to work together and figure stuff out. Um, you have some guidelines, of course, because they don't want to be wandering around, you know, looking at, oh, what do we want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? You know, you have to have some guidance so that they can go in a correct uh, direction. You need to check in on them so that, you know, when they start going too far astray, you can pull them back in and say, oh, I see that this is happening. Now, you don't have to be the only one to do that. Other student groups can do that if you have this sharing built in, if they have some forum where they can update each other what they're doing, then you can watch the whole group. And some group that's going off in this other direction might say, huh, everybody else is over in this other direction. Maybe we should move along in that direction. So they, there's self-regulation that happens both individually and within groups that relieves some of the responsibility um, off of you. They'll catch a lot of the things. That said, you do still need to be in there um, watching to make sure that not everybody's going the wrong direction. All right. We're going to pull up, um, I'm going to have Karen pull up a white board and um, our prompt today, and I will write it on on the in the chat here as well, is what are the major challenges? And you don't have a lot of space for this. You only have a couple of words in remote projects. So what do you see as the big obstacles or challenges? Oh, you know what? I can put this in chat myself here. That's a greatly spelled what, isn't it? Yeah. No, not editable. Can you tell me how to remove the eraser on the whiteboard? Why do we fear to use it? When we have our whiteboard up, it, oh, it, oh, um, it's there. I just and then... did it. <laughs> oh, man. So sorry. All right. Yeah. Because, yeah, our students will accidentally hit it and then. Just like I did. Yeah. <sighs> That's why I hate using it. I hate using is that it a, too now. Is that a moderator level thing? Because we it sometimes is. have to. You... Hmm. I All don't right, think that, you I... can. Um, Let's 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 talk about this. This is great. Sure. One of the things that we've done in the past and that we might do. So part of the reason that, that I use the Google document as well that I can put in the chat here on the side is because that has an undo 
and that has a that is a persistent document that people can get to and add to and nobody will um, if they do delete the whole thing you can just go into version history and undelete it right things are not lost um, formatting is so much better with Google Docs you can do the same thing with a Google slide by the way put a Google slide in and then send people to the link to it um, I do wish that um, there was a better whiteboard function in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. It's an excellent point. And I had just forgotten how to use the eraser, so I deleted everything. I'm sorry. All right. OK, the big challenges include student interactions and online skills. Um, Ensuring that the workload is reasonable and manageable. Oh yeah, that's a great one, uh, both for students and instructor in providing feedback. And you know, you've got the answer to that in, as the last word in that statement, it's feedback. Um, the workload is reasonable and manageable. If it's not, get their feedback, monitor what they're doing um, at a casual level so that, and you know, don't just say, all right, folks, you're off on your project and I'll see you at the end of the semester with you know, a great project and then be surprised if they don't do what you had wanted um, or if they go off on that interesting garden path that doesn't lead anywhere. Knowing how to take advantage of collaborative tech. Yeah, as an instructor, it keeps changing, right? Um, and in many ways, we have to rely on the students to teach us because they're using it in other classes. They use it individually with themselves. Um, a lot of your students coming in right now have been in the K-12 system that is a Google Classroom, Google Collaborative Suite. They've used G Suite and Google Documents. That's one of the big reasons that I am, am a fan of using Google Docs rather than Box or Word. Um, a lot of them are coming out very comfortable with this already. So let's already, let's use what they're using. If, as long as it's good, instead of teaching them a new a new technology. Social loafing is a great one. And hopefully let's talk about some ways some ways to um to to work with that. Uh, time management skills. In the student surveys, when they talk about what their biggest challenges are and what as seniors they learned that helped them out the most, guess which one is the big number one? It's time management. Um, and as an instructor, you're not just teaching them um, your content, unfortunately. You are also, um, or at least it's helpful, if you also help give them hints and tips on how to do the things in your discipline more efficiently, because they don't know. They're still learning that. Student anxiety, some is very anxious. Setting clear expectations, great. Again, encouraging them to set clear expectations helps a lot and ensuring that groups are on track to meet milestones. Milestones is so important. And this is gonna be a major theme of today's, um, today's topic. Projects. Don't think of it as one project. Think of it as many little projects that build on each other and add up to one result, cohesive result. So every little project can be a standalone project that builds on, I guess it's not a standalone project if it builds on the one before it, but they build on, it's scaffolding. They scaffold on what they just learned and use that, use what they just learned to complete the next part. So that's all I'm going to say right now. And we're going to take 10 minutes. So until 1.30, and we're going to break you up into, we've got four moderators into three groups, four groups, one of them, three groups. Oh. All right, Karen and Karen, can we do this? Can we um, have uh, an equal number of people in the main room with me in case somebody else comes in? Can the main room be part of the groups? No, I don't think so. All right, so go ahead and put me in a group too. So we'll have roughly 30 to eight people per group and we'll take 10 minutes. And at this time, feel free to turn on your microphone, turn on your video, say hi to each other, and let's talk about some of these things. And if you've heard of anything or seen any um, answers, bring those up and share them with, with each other. 
All right. So you want me to put us into four groups since there's four moderators? Yeah, four groups, and I'll just keep an eye on the the main room in case somebody else comes in. Okay, that sounds good. Here we go. <laughs>